Hi there, it's Alexandra from the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel and blog with the March Garden Tour. And that's when I go around the garden and see what's worked and what hasn't in the hopes that can help you too. It's been a pretty mild month so far. Sometimes it's been as high as 18 degrees Celsius, which is about 64, 65 Fahrenheit. And that's really high for sort of late February, early March. And it's been incredibly windy. But it's been quite mild and everything's bursting out, particularly the bulbs. The middle-sized garden is an L-shaped garden and it's about 100 feet long and it's 80 feet wide at its widest. And at the moment, the bulbs are the big thing. We've got narcissi and we've got daffodils. Now, both of these have been in the garden for quite a long time. I would say 10 years or more, possibly for some of them, even 30 years. Some were planted by my predecessor. And uh, the great thing about daffodils and narcissi is that they clump up over the years, or certain varieties clump up. And when you get a clump that's been very well established for too long, you need to dig it up and separate it out. And you'll get lots of new daffodils for free, and the daffodils will keep on flowering. And I haven't done this for a few years, and I can see that I'm getting fewer daffodils over the years, and some are going blind. So in about six weeks time, I will start digging up some of these daffodils. But until then, I'm really going to enjoy them. The hyacinths are mainly SKPs from inside the house. Either I've bought or people have given me hyacinths which have been forced for winter. And when the flowers are over, I have never wanted to throw them away. So I've just wedged them into funny little corners of the garden. And amazingly, they've taken a year or so to kind of re-establish into their right seasons. But now we've got hyacinths popping up all over the place. Leucogium are probably one of my favourite bulbs. They seem to flower for weeks, if not months at a time. And my predecessor planted them around the silver birches, which I think looks really beautiful. So I've carried on planting them around newly planted shrubs. So I've just dug up the leucogiums once again and then split the bulbs and replanted around in different places. I haven't had to buy new. They look like giant snowdrops. My favourite bulb area is between two deciduous trees, the silver birch and the cotinus. Now both these trees are beautiful in the spring and the summer and the autumn, but there's absolutely no leaves on them in the winter, so it's a brilliant place to plant bulbs. Another of my favourite bulbs is the giant fritillary. Now these bulbs are expensive, so usually I can only get sort of one or two but they come back year after year and they are very statuesque and gorgeous. They do get lily beetle and you're supposed to pick the lily beetle off and and squash it which I have to say I find a little difficult. I've done a lot of cutting back this month. Grasses, hydrangea heads and cornice stems are all great for winter interest but now's the time to cut them back. When you cut back hydrangea heads, you usually take them down to the next good pair of buds. This hydrangea, Annabelle, can also be cut right down to the ground. When I cut the cornice, these lovely coloured stems, they're actually lovely to use inside the house for flower arranging. So that's quite a nice another thing that you can do with them. And as for the grasses, it's just a haircut. Out with the shears, straight down to the ground. If they've started to grow again, doesn't really matter, they will grow, but in fact these haven't. This is Panicum Virgatum Shenandoah and it looks fabulous in pots from about August to about March, but now its time is over. The biggest job has probably been root pruning this box spiral. It's probably the most important plant in my garden and it's certainly the most expensive. And I bought it two or three years ago from Bellamont Topiary in Dorset who dug it up directly from the field. And they told me that every two or three years I would need to root prune it by about a third. So this has been the year that we've done it. Firstly, tipping out a pot of this size is quite a job. But if you tip it out on its side and then pull gently, you can usually get it out. There are loads and loads of little roots and they're holding all the soil in. So it wasn't easy to get much soil out. And the whole point of it is to give the plant new soil for nutrition. So I used both secateurs and shears and then in the end loppers in order to try and get all these little roots to cut them back by about a third. Once I got about a third of the compost and the roots off, we then added new compost to the pot 
and slowly lifted the plant back in and then we sort of topped up around the sides of the pot and in the middle to get all the extra soil in. This particular compost comes from a local company called Edible Culture in Faversham. Edible Culture in Faversham are now selling compost in reusable bags to get away from one-use plastics. You buy the compost in the bag, you keep the bag and then you take it back for a refill which costs about £1.50 less. It's a great idea and I hope more nurseries and garden centres will start to do it. One of the gorgeous things about this time of year is the blossom and this tree is called an ornamental cherry called snow goose and it has fabulous autumn colour but I also think that the white blossom at this time of year against the silver birch is just gorgeous. And another tree that is really enjoyable is magnolia. We enjoy our neighbour's magnolia, we don't have one in the garden. But we're still waiting for the fruit blossom, for the apples, the crab apple and the quinces. And so that'll have to wait for next month's garden tour. And we'll also hope that by next month, some of these trees, the Robinia frisia, the Catinus and the silver birch, will also be in leaf or almost in leaf. At the moment, they do look rather bare. I'm also trialling a peat-free compost this year because the RHS says that gardeners really should not be using peat in their gardens. It is a resource that the earth cannot afford to give up. I, I've been given a bag of Westlands Bio 3 peat-free compost and I have planted up some seedlings using that and some using a standard peat-based compost. And so far, I have to say the results are very good because the seeds are coming through slightly earlier in the Bio 3 compost. If you found this useful, do press like because then I'll know you'd like to see some practical tips in the garden tours. And if you haven't subscribed to the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel, we upload on Saturdays with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.